Make a date with Rev. Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online. Truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. We meet behind the trade fair, uh, behind Zenith College. So you can always reach us on Sundays in the morning and midweek services for uh, in the evening on Wednesdays. This morning I'd like to capture my thoughts on just uh, this few words, uh, space for everything. I've got space for everything. I mean space for everything. Or let's uh, rather put it this way room for everything room for everything now um in joshua chapter 2 uh verse 15 in actual fact uh, in the book of joshua uh, there are two chapters that speak of a very interesting lady and that lady's name is called rahab now if you if you read carefully uh chapter 2 and chapter 6 um you'll find out especially chapter 2 verse 15 uh, you'll find out some very interesting things about her she was a prostitute Rahab was a prostitute, and that is very, very interesting. But then I, I, I reckon that, I mean, the, the, the idea that she's a prostitute would raise your eyebrow and say, whoa, I mean, but you'd be very, very surprised that in God's Hall of Fame, in Hebrews chapter 11, her name is there. A prostitute's name is in Hebrews chapter 11. I mean, I think when we were kids, we used to call them Mami I Come. Mami I Come's name? In Hebrews chapter 11, that is those who impress God with their faith. And the, her name is there. And I'm beginning to wonder, wow. In actual fact, there is a book I have called The Prostitute's Prosperity. It's coming out very soon. But there's something that is very unique about this woman. And for me, um, the Bible says she was a prostitute. And if you remember, the two spies were sent to her. And uh, she received those two spies and not just received them, but she uh, protected them. And then she made a covenant with them. And out of that covenant, she was rescued and her family and not just her family. And she even went on and had endless possibilities by God choosing to come through her womb in producing his Christ. And I'm talking about Rahab being one of the great, great, great grandmothers of Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. A prostitute with endless possibilities. What made her uh, outstanding for me? Now, if you remember, her name meant, uh, her name is Rahab. And Rahab had two uh, meanings. One of them was proud. And the other one was called Rumi. And that means somebody who has room for everything. Now, all throughout Rahab's life, until she met those two spies, she had had room for everything from rich man, poor man, beggar man, and thief. Because she was a prostitute, she traded in the flesh of men. And Rahab was somebody who had room on all sides for, for every man. And the Bible said two men came. And when those two men came, that was also another opportunity for Rahab to do her service and to earn her keep or to earn uh, her profit. But the Bible said, she identified something about them. And that thing she identified about them, she said, this or these two men are God's purpose coming to me. I am not going to have, um, I'm not going to get into that kind of activity with them anymore. My simple um, message this morning is, she had had room for everything. And this time she said, it is time I have room for the things of God. Rahab said, I've had time, I've had room, I've had time, I've had space for rich man, for poor man, for beggar man, and for thief. And for every man that, who is available, I've had time, provided the money is right. I've had time and I've had room for every one of them. But guess what? This is God's purpose coming to me and I also need to make room for it. I'll, once I've had room for all this, I'll have room for the things of God. You'd be very, very surprised to find out that there are people who have room for everything or they have time for everything on the surface of the earth except God. And accept the things of God. Oh, you'll be very, very surprised. They may go to church and uh, they'll be looking at their time for the pastor to close quickly. But may spend hours on end at a party just sitting and chatting with other people. For God, little space. For God, little room. But for every other thing, big room. 
Rahab said, I've had room for everything. It's now time for me to have room for God. Now that's my question to you. Do you have room for the things of God? You better do it now. Because the Bible says, remember the Lord in the days of thy youth. When you have time, when you have space, when you have the energy, don't wait until you are somewhere uh, near the Jordan when you're about to cross. Then you begin to think about God. Then you begin to make space for God. You need to make room for God now in your life. Put him as priority. God bless you. See you next time.